So uh, welcome to numerical methods. We are still in our section on random number generation and we moved to generating random number sequences or drawings yeah, of other distributions. We had the inversion of the distribution function, which is maybe the most uh, popular method. And then here at the very end, we uh, had the acceptance rejection sampling, which is yeah, maybe not often used, at least with Monte Carlo. And we will see later also why uh, it is not often used with Monte Carlo, um, but which is uh, interesting yeah, from a didactical aspect because it will then motivate later the weighted Monte Carlo method. So just to uh, repeat, yeah, here we have the yeah, little lemma. So the acceptance rejection sampling situation is that I like to generate an F distributed sequence. So I like to generate drawings yeah, of the random variable X. I do know the density. I do, do not know the inverse of the distribution function, but I do know the density. And what I also know is that I can generate a G-distributed uh, sequence of a random variable Y, uh, from which I also do know the density. And there is some constant C, such that C times the density G, yeah, so of my sequence Y, uh, dominates the density uh, F. Yeah, so I can yeah, lift this flow density, the density G, a little bit to be on top, to be a hull of the density F. Yeah? So this is a more or less a condition on the asymptotics. Yeah? So and in between, I can lift it above. Yeah, then the algorithm was that you generate the Y distributed sequence. And then additionally, you have an independent uniform that you sample along and you then check this little condition here is the uniform that you sampled less or equal f of y j divided by c times g of y j so this ratio here of the two densities divided by the c yeah so by this condition here you know that this ratio is a number less or equal one yeah so the uniform your sample is between zero and one so it means that you throw away a few points, yeah? So we had this little picture here and you just check the condition and then you throw away a few points and you keep some other points. And these points which you keep, yeah, then make up your sequence XI. So that was the acceptance rejection method. And what I'd like to do with you today is to illustrate this method again with a nice example. I would like to sample sequence that is normally distributed. So drawings of the normal distribution. And yeah, this is also a nice um, exercise. And um, later, yeah, so after this, uh, we will have a look again at uh, acceptance rejection in the context of Monte Carlo. Yeah? So we go back to the previous section of Monte Carlo. And we see that when we combine the two, we find the weighted Monte Carlo method. So I would like to sample the normal distribution. This is a very nice example because I do know the density. Yeah, One divided by square root of 2p exponential minus 1 half x squared. I do know the density, but the inverse of the distribution function is not known. The distribution function is not known. Yeah? So it's exactly this uh, situation. So I have... The density, yeah, so maybe I write this density down here. So there is here the density, it's exponential minus one half x squared, okay, with, with some factor here in front. Okay, so this is my density f. And yeah, what is now a good choice for a random variable where I do know the density, where I do know how I can generate a sequence being drawings of this random variable, so my random variable y, and where I can put this density, yeah, maybe with a little constant c, on top. Yeah, for this, you 
need to have a look at the asymptotics here. So the asymptotics here is x squared, yeah, e to the minus, yeah, x squared minus one half x squared. So maybe I would like to have something that goes slower to zero. Maybe I take something like e to the minus x. No? Okay, this is maybe a nice guy, yeah, because I do know maybe I can dominate in the limit, yeah, for x to infinity, I can dominate the f, and then maybe in between I can find a constant such that c times g is above f. There is a little problem here. Uh, this guy holds only for x being larger or equal zero, while uh, this guy on top my normal distribution, this density is defined yeah, for all, all x. But I can get rid of this. Maybe I can just uh, sample the positive normal distributed part, yeah? so only the right-hand side. And then I can do this maybe twice yeah, and sample the other side. Okay, so here is the idea. And this is also what you find in some textbooks. And I like to do this first, yeah, but maybe a small remark or teaser. Uh, I believe there's even a better, better way to sample the normal distribution with acceptance rejection, which is very similar to this. So what are we doing? So my aim is that I would like to sample a normal distributed random variable x. Okay, but the first trick is that I apply acceptance rejection to absolute value of x, yeah? so only the positive part. So the random variable absolute value of x, so what is the density of this random variable? Well, that's just two times the density of the normal distribution. Yeah, because I have flipped everything to the other side, yeah, so I get every point twice, yeah, two times, and then restricted to the positive axis. Yeah. So you see that you have here this, this two in the density because I restrict myself to the positive axis. Yeah, because I'm considering here the absolute value. Yeah? So this is the density of x absolute value. So this is now the sequence, the density um, of the random variable from which I would like to generate a sequence. So that my density is here below. This is here my little f. It is only on the positive side. And then at, as a last step, yeah, I would like to generate out of this a normal. So I have to sample in addition the sign. So I just sample again a uniform random variable, for example, and then uniform is between zero and one. You can maybe just decide, are you larger one half? Then it's maybe a plus. Are you smaller one half? Then it is a minus. Yeah? So you sample in addition a sign. So I will first do acceptance rejection for absolute value of x, and then I will sample the sign, yeah, the sign here with probability one half, a plus or a minus one. So let's focus now here on this part that I would like to sample the sequence, yeah, that is our drawings of absolute value of x. So I like to use acceptance rejection method for absolute value of x. Yeah, this is now nice because this is the same domain here as the exponential distribution. Okay, so I can now consider my random variable y, random variable y, which is exponentially distributed Let's take the density exponential minus x. Yeah? So our homogeneous exponential distribution with parameter lambda equal one. So first thing I have to check is, do I find a constant c 
yeah, such that C times G is larger equal F. Okay, so maybe I write this here on top. Yeah, let's have a look. What is F of X divided by G of X? Yeah, so F of X is the two divided by square root of two P exponential minus one half X squared. Yeah? And then the G is exponential minus X dividing by exponential minus X is like multiplying with exponential plus X yeah? and multiplying with exponential plus X is like having here a plus one X. Yeah? Yeah, so instead of having there a plus one X, yeah, I could also make a bracket here around and have a minus two X. I have a minus two X. Okay, and then I would like to have that this thing is, yeah, less or equal one, yeah, because this should be somewhere bounded, yeah. I would like to find this constant. Yeah, then maybe I make this to a quadratic term, if I place here another plus one. Okay, so I have added there a plus one, which is actually an exponential minus one half. Yeah? So this means I have to multiply with an exponential plus one half. Let's do this outside, multiplied with e to the one half, yeah, multiplying with e to the one half is multiplying with square root of e. Okay, so f divided by g is actually two times square root of e divided by square root of two p, exponential minus one half x squared minus two x plus one, where the x squared minus two x plus one, so this part here is of course just x minus one squared, x minus one squared. So I have that this thing here, yeah, this is exponential two, yeah, and then uh, a negative number, this thing is less or equal one. So I can make this here less or equal one if I divide by this factor. Yeah, two divided by square root of two is just square root of two. So actually this factor there in front is just square root of two times E divided by P. And this is now my C Yeah, because if I now divide by this guy here, I have that f divided by c times g is s or equal one. Okay, so I get this nice condition. Yeah, so we have that if I take this constant, then f divided by c times g is less or equal one. And I can apply yeah, my acceptance rejection sampling theorem. So this will lead now to my condition for the u. So my condition for the U is, is U less or equal? Yeah, exactly this expression, exponential minus one half X minus one squared. So if this is the case, I accept the point. Otherwise I throw it away. Um, next thing I have to do, I have to generate my sequence that are drawings of Y. And for this, I like to use the inversion of the distribution function. So I like to generate here a exponentially distributed sequence. Okay, so what is the distribution function? So the distribution functions say capital G of Y. Yeah, so this is the integral yeah, from zero. I can start in zero because... There is no mass on the negative axis from zero to y. And then it is g of x, so exponential minus x dx. Yeah? So if you integrate this, there's a minus in front. 
And then it is exponential minus y for the upper bound and exponential zero yeah? so for the lower bound so minus minus so plus one so my g is yeah we know that already one minus exponential minus y if i would like to generate this by the inversion of the distribution function yeah then i set this equal to some v Okay, so this should be now equal to some v, and you then solve, okay, then you can solve, yeah, minus one to the other side, v minus one, multiply with minus one, so it's one minus v on the other side, take the logarithm, okay, so I have logarithm of one minus v, and multiply with minus one, so minus logarithm. Okay, so now we have everything here on the slide. So what do we do? We sample a uniform distributed random variable u. We sample a uniform distributed random variable v. From the uniform distributed random variable, I calculate the y. And then I use the y as the x. You know? And I plug this in here and check if I accept the point. And if I accept the point, this is my x. Then I have the sample of the absolute value of a normal. Then I take another uniform, a third uniform, to sample the sign. So for example, the third uniform, you just decide is it larger one half or smaller one half. You get with equal probability the sign and then I'm done. Okay, so this looks a little bit involved, but actually if we implement it, it's quite short. And I call this method, yeah, acceptance rejection in three dimensions, because actually we need three uniforms, the U, the V, and then the third uniform that gives me the sign. Let's try it. And then we will have a look at another method, which is actually just using two uniforms. Yeah, let's try a small experiment here in our project. Let's call that normal distribution with acceptance rejection experiment. I would like to have a main method. Okay, and maybe I first define how many yeah, samples would we like to generate. So let's maybe define this here as constant. So this is my constant number of samples, 10, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, maybe let's you know, use 10 million. And my first test is that I would like to test acceptance rejection with, and let's use Mersenne Twister for that and use the version that uses three uniform to generate this. Yeah, uh, how can I check that it is normal? Yeah, you could do some statistical test now. Let's just visually check it. I would like to plot the distribution of the generated sequence. And to do this, I just collect my sequence again, like we did before in some list. Yeah, let's have a list of floating point numbers. Yeah, so these are my normals. Okay, so this is my array list here where I now will collect the normals. So what do we do? We will iterate over all samples. Okay, then I will generate my normal. So I said, let's call this normal X. Huh? Maybe I initialize this here to zero because Java will otherwise uh, complain in the end that I did not initialize it, but we will calculate this. So then comes here my acceptance rejection algorithm. And in the end, I put this normal to into my list yeah, to collect it and I will generate the next one. So then in the end, we can plot all the samples that we have generated. Yeah, So that comes here below then 
in in the end. Yeah. Now, how does the acceptance rejection work? So we have to sample the two uniforms or three uniforms and check if we accept the point. So let's define a Boolean. So let's initialize the Boolean to we have rejected. So let's call it then is rejected. And let's repeat now our trial as long as we are rejecting the point. Okay, so what we are we doing now? So I need now the at least two uniforms. So the first step is I need the two uniforms. I will sample the U and I will sample the V. From the V, I will calculate the Y. And then I will plug in the Y in my condition here because the Y is the candidate for X. Yeah? So maybe you can draw this here. The Y is the candidate for X to check if I accept the point. So let's generate the uniform. Yeah, I need a random number generator. Let's use Mesen Twister. Let's initialize a random number generator here. So this is my random number generator, 1D. This is my Mersenne Twister. Yeah, maybe I initialize it with some seed. So we get always the same sequence. So let's draw a uniform random number, my U. Let's draw the uniform random number, my V. Then do, C, do the ICDF to calculate my Y, yeah? So or actually my candidate for X. Yeah? So I have already initialized X up on, on top, yeah? So I can just write X. This is inversion of the distribution function of the exponential distribution. This is minus logarithm of one minus V. So check if we accept the point yeah? or if we rejected the point. So, we will accept it if u is actually less or equal my condition. Yeah? So this is exponential minus one half x minus one times x minus one. Yeah, x minus one squared. So this expression here was the ratio of f divided by c times g. So this is the acceptance condition, but I would like on the left-hand side rejected. Yeah, so if I will reject if u is larger than this. So otherwise, the guy is fine. Yeah, and what pops out here below is my candidate x. Yeah, that's already it. So that's already it up to this point that I have sampled the absolute value. Yeah, so this here is the candidate for absolute value of x, yeah? because I only get the positive guys. So I need additionally the sign. So let's sample the sign. So I have a sign. The s is just, let's take another random number. Okay, and maybe I just check, is this guy larger or equal one half? Now, if yes, my sign is positive. Otherwise, my sign is negative. So I have sampled the sign. Yeah? So now my uh, normal is S times X. And I can add down my normal to my list. Yeah, this should be the acceptance rejection method to sample the normal distribution. You see that I made a small yeah, improvement here. You could, of course, think this is a three-dimensional thing here. You could say also that you sample all the three guys here, but uh, you don't need to sample the sign when you already reject the point because checking the condition does not require the sign. It's because the condition is symmetric. So this is just a small um, improvement that, yeah, I only sample the sign when I 
know that I will accept the point. Let's try and plot this. So I have a nice little helper in my plots package here that creates a density. A density out for yeah, a list of numbers. So here you need the number of buckets. So actually it's a histogram. Yeah? And here you need to specify the standard deviation that you should used yeah so you see how many points how many how, what how large is the sum standard deviation let's add maybe some title so my title is just say the random number generator that was used and maybe also that we use the version the 3d version let's show the plot and maybe i try the experiment let's Run this guy. Okay. That looks like a normal distribution. Yeah? Okay, maybe I add another space here in the title. Yeah, so that looks like a normal distribution. So my sequence X looks normal distributed. So you could also maybe uh, check how many points actually have we thrown away. Yeah? How can I check this? Well, I need actually to count yeah, how many tests did I do. Yeah, I do know the total number of the samples, but actually how many samples did I use here? So maybe I initialize here an integer. say maybe number of samples tested, okay? And I just increment this count here. Oh, sorry, I need to initialize this, of course, here on the outside. And let's print now the acceptance rate. So my acceptance rate is the number of samples I got out and the number of samples I have needed. Okay, and the acceptance rate is, yeah, 75%, yeah, so 25% of the points have been thrown away. Yeah, we can maybe check if this agrees a little bit with our constant, yeah, one divided by C should be the acceptance rate. Maybe before I go to the 2D version, one little question. Can we also do this with a quasi random number sequence, a low discrepancy sequence? Okay, the thing is that there is a condition. U, V, and S have to be independent. And now recall what we had in this very important session when we looked at low discrepancy sequences in higher dimension, you cannot just take a one-dimensional random number generator and then hmm, repeat this like, like here yeah, and draw three times a one-dimensional, three times from the one-dimensional generator. You need to have three independence. This means for the low discrep discrepancy sequences, for the quasi uh, random number sequence, you need a three-dimensional sequence. So let's repeat this now with the quasi random number sequence. So let's test acceptance rejection with the Horton sequence. Okay, so maybe I'm a little bit lazy and I copy all this code. And I just modify it accordingly. So now I need a random number generator in higher dimensions. And my random number generator is the Horton sequence. So the Horton sequence requires bases. So these have to be co-primes. So an array of integers. And which array do we use? Yeah, let's use two three, and five. So this here is my random number generator. So if you go to my interface, you see now you get immediately a vector. 
in a certain dimension. I get a three-dimensional vector here. And now I draw the uniform sample vector. So this is now my uniform sample vector, which I draw from this random number generator. So my U is now the first component of this guy. My V is the second component of this guy. Oops. So you see that we have, like in the acceptance rejection theorem or lemma, yeah, that I sample here a pair U, Y, yeah, or in this version where you combine it with the inversion of the distribution function like we do here. Yeah, this was here. I sample a pair U, V yeah, of uniforms. And I also need an independent sample for the sign. Yeah? So let's move the sample for the sign now here on top and say we have some W, which is the third component of my sample vector. And now you clearly see why I call this method 3D. Yeah? So this uniform here will decide the sign if W is larger than one half, I take a plus, otherwise a minus. And the uniform V will sample the candidate for the absolute value of the normal. And then the U is checking, or yeah, if I accept the point, yeah, is filtering the points out. Huh? So I have sampled the sign here. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, so now he doesn't know the S here. You could. Maybe you initialize this to this normal here. And now write normal cli equals s times x there and initialize x as a local variable. But this would be now my version using a Horton sequence. And you see, it's a little bit cleaner from the implementation because I immediately know I need a, a three vector of independent components. Yeah. While here, actually, I have a little bit combined this method with how we can populate a vector. I could also have used here, say, a general three vector of pseudo random number numbers by using our little wrapper helper, a random number from 1D hmm, that, that does this population. Yeah, so let's look at our Halton sequence version, Yeah, the one which we have on top here, also gives us the right picture. Okay, so we have these two results. Yeah, this looks also like a normal distribution. This is the Horton sequence. This is the Mersenne and Twister used yeah, in acceptance rejection, where we sample three uniforms to generate one candidate for my normal distributed random number, which we filter out. Yeah, I get here slightly different acceptance rates. Yeah, there is a Monte Carlo error, uh, an error in this in the sampling. Okay, so that was um, an example which you will find very often in a textbook, in the textbooks. Acceptance rejection for the normal distribution. We can take a slightly different approach. And personally, I like this a little bit more because it is a little bit more natural. Yeah. So here, the, there was a small trick. Yeah, we did not sample the normal distribution with acceptance rejection. We sampled something else, yeah, and then we take took the trick with the sign. Yeah, we, we did this because the exponential distributed random variable is only on the positive side, so we flipped the normal to the other side. Yeah, of course, we could also leave the normal as it is and expand, yeah, or flip the exponential to the negative axis. And this is yeah, the second version, which I call uh, sometimes 2D. 
And uh, let's start over and try again. Normal distributed random variable drawings of this guy with acceptance rejection. So the density of the normal distribution is one divided by square root of 2p exponential minus one half x squared. The density of my exponential distribution is exponential minus x. But now I fold this yeah, and I take one half to the left side and one half to the right side. So one half to the negative axis, one half to the positive axis. So this means instead of having the factor two on the F, I now have a factor one half on the exponential and I get in addition an absolute value inside. Yeah, So I consider now the exponential symmetric to the positive and negative axis and therefore my density has a one half because the integral is now two times the integral of the exponential density. So I would like to have the integral being one. So this here is the density g of my random variable random variable y. Uh, so this is not exactly exponential distributed, but I can calculate the distribution function of this guy analytically. And then I can perform the inversion of the distribution function. First, let's have a look. What is my acceptance criteria? So F divided by G. Yeah, on the previous slide, there was a factor of two in the F. Now I have a factor of one half in the G. So F divided by G is exactly the same expression. So if I use exactly the same constant, yeah, I get exactly the same condition. So maybe I don't repeat this calculation. Yeah, it's exactly the same condition with the same constant C here. So just calculate F divided by G, yeah, so it's a small modification. Of course, since I'm now on the left side and the right side, there's now here absolute value of X inside. Huh? Okay, so maybe this should be noted as a difference. Yeah, there is an absolute value of X here. On the other condition, it was not necessary because we already sampled absolute value of X. Let's use acceptance rejection with this setup. I need the distribution function G. So I need the G of Y. So this is the integral from minus infinity to Y, G of X dx. Okay, what's this guy? So I generate the G distributed random variable Y. Yeah, we are inversion of the distribution function from my uniform V. And what do I have for the distribution function G? So integral minus infinity to X, G of C, DC. So this is integral over one half exponential minus absolute value of C, DC. Okay, so maybe first case, x is smaller than zero. So if x is negative, the xi will be negative. Yeah? And minus absolute value of xi is just the xi. So I'm just integrating one half exponential of xi. So this just gives me one half exponential at the upper bound x minus the lower bound yeah, zero. Okay, so for the negative side, yeah, this is okay. For the positive side, I have the integral part from minus infinity to zero, yeah, which is one half integrate the density of the exponential distribution, so which is just one half. And then I have the integral from zero, from zero to x. So this is integrate one half exponential. Yeah, now my C is positive. 
minus absolute value of xi is minus xi. So I integrate one half exponential minus xi de xi. Yeah? So I get a minus in front and I have the one half in front. Yeah, and then you have yeah the integral at the upper bound, yeah, the exponential minus x and the integral at the lower bound exponential of zero, this is one. Okay, so this is then this part. Yeah, this uh, function looks complicated. Yeah, I have two cases, but actually you see that you can write the two cases is one case if you just introduce the sign of x. Yeah, maybe you just verify that these two cases are now contained on the right-hand side. So if the sign of x is positive, this is just one half minus one uh, sine of x times one half exponential minus absolute value of x is the same as x minus one. Okay, so this guy is correct. For the case x is larger than zero, for the case x is smaller than zero, the exponential minus absolute value of x is just the exponential of x, so that's okay. And you see that the sign will lead to the fact that the one half in front is canceling now with a plus one half multiplied with minus one. Yeah? So this guy here is canceling if the sign here is negative with a minus one half multiplied with minus one is a plus one half. So this is just canceling. So it's the correct expression in the two cases is one half minus the sine of x times one half exponential minus absolute value of x minus one. So this looks really complicated, but this is my distribution function. And now I like to invert this. So this distribution function should be equal to my v. So I have v is equal to one half, one minus sine of y exponential minus absolute value of y minus one. Yeah, so what do you do? Yeah, so maybe I just copy this here. Okay, so what do you do? You multiply the v by two. Okay, then you move the one to the other side. So then I have a minus sign of y. So I divide this expression here with minus sign of y, but dividing with minus sign of y is the same as multiplying with minus sign of y. Okay, so this goes away. Then I have exponential of minus absolute value of y minus one, so I have a plus one. Then I take the logarithm, so the exponential goes away. Yeah? So I, I did the plus one and I have the exponential. And now I have on the right-hand side minus absolute value of y, but minus absolute value of y is the same as minus sine of y times y. So I divide again with the sine of y, or I just multiply again with the sine of y. So this will then remove the minus absolute value. So on the right-hand side, I now have the y. On the left-hand side, I have this expression. So we just have this inversion. y is minus sine of y logarithm of one. One minus sine of y times 2v minus 1. So this is the inversion of the distribution function for this special yeah, symmetric um, exponential. There is a sign of y on the right-hand side now here, but you can, of course, express this also in terms of the v. Yeah? Observe that y is larger than 0 if the distribution function at that point is larger than one half. Yeah? So it's exactly in the, in the middle. So this means that the V should be larger than one half. Yeah, V larger than one half is 
the same as 2v minus 1 larger than 0. Yeah? 2v larger than 1, 2v minus 1 larger than 0. So actually I have that the sine of y is the sine of 2v minus 1. So I have this nice inversion of the distribution function. And the funny thing is that this here is very much linked to what we did before. The thing is that you split your uniform V into two parts, the part from zero to one half and the part from one half to one. Okay, the part in which you are decides on the sign. Yeah. So this is the same as we did before. We have a uniform which decides on the sign. Being on the left side of one half is the negative sign. Being on the right side of one half is the positive sign. But then I use the uniform inside this interval from, say, zero to one half or from one half to uh, one. I use that to generate the inverse yeah, to generate my exponential distributed random variable. So this is very similar to what we did in the three-dimensional version. It's just that I used this single uniform to sample the sign and the exponential distribution at the same time by partitioning these actually into intervals. Let's implement this method. So here is a little summary on how my two-dimensional acceptance rejection method now works. Uh, I have uniforms U and V independent on 0, 1. I use the V to sample now my normal. Yeah. The sign S is the sign of 2V minus 1. The exponential distributed random variable Z is minus logarithm 1 minus absolute value of 2V minus 1. The candidate for the normal, y, is s times z. And then the x is, take the candidate if you accept it. Yeah? The acceptance criteria is the same. So let's use this algorithm and implement it. Here is another test. So test acceptance rejection with mehr than twister and let's say 2D. Okay, so maybe I copy the code from our 3D version so that I do not need to write all the other lines. And just delete the other stuff. Yeah? And now calculate the values yeah, according to my slide here, my, my set. No? Or Let's call it, uh, let's call it set. So my set is now minus the logarithm of one minus absolute value of two times V minus one. So that was here my set, right? So now I have the set, yeah? So I can already use this guy to check if I accept the point. So my acceptance, criteria. So actually that is exactly the same. So I have is rejected is equal is the u, yeah, less or equal is accepted is the u larger than take the exponential of minus one half z minus one squared. This is the point is accepted or rejected. So let's calculate the sign. So my sign is the sign. So there is a function here, signum, which we could use, yeah? two times V minus one. Maybe you have to be a little bit careful here, this function, uh, yeah, it maps the positive, yeah, the values larger than uh, zero to one, the values less than zero to minus one, and it maps zero to zero, but actually mapping zero to zero is not a problem because then my z will be zero to. So now my normal is s times z. So you see, I only need two uniforms to sample this. So maybe I 
change the title here in my plot and we can run our experiment again. So this one was the 3D version with Merced Twister. This one was the 3D version with acceptance rejection. And this one is now the 2D version. Yeah, looks also like a normal. And maybe you recognize that it was much faster, right? Let's complete this little experiment with the last thing that we test acceptance rejection with the Horton sequence in 2D. Okay, so this method, yeah, this is now very similar. Maybe I just copy the code from here. Yeah, I need a random number generator that is now a Horton sequence, a Horton sequence in two dimensions. So I need basis co-primes. Let's take two and three. And from this generator, I need now the uniform, the vector, my uniform sample vector. This is my random number generator sample. So I use the first element for my U and the second element for my V. This is now quite clean, clean code. Huh? So then sample the exponential distributed random variable and sample the sign yeah, simultaneously from the V yeah, and check if you are accepted or rejected. So this is now my fourth version. Okay, so you see all the guys generate nice normal distributed sequences. Yeah, so these look all very nice. Okay, maybe I flip the two. So that was a little experiment. And as always, you find this experiment here in our repository. So this is in normal distribution with acceptance rejection in this package. And maybe let's have a look there because there I also added a little bit the timing. So this is random number experiments. So if you look at this guy, you see that I have the 3D version with my and Twister, the 2D version with my and Twister. And I also have another guy, which we already did previously, the inverse of the distribution function. Yeah, So I'll just use the ICDF method to sample the normal distribution. And what I do here in addition is I always calculate the start time and the end time of the generation. And I calculate the seconds that we needed for this. For all the six methods, yeah, 3D, 2D, ICDF, with Mass and Twister or with Holton sequence. So, and if you run this, this is exactly the same code as we have created today uh, with this little addition. We also see a little bit the timing. So you see the 3D version took 1.3 seconds. The 2D version is 30% faster. Yeah, this is reasonable because yeah, we need only two out of the, instead of the three. Um, yeah, 30% faster. Actually, you would expect maybe this takes one second, then this should, should maybe take 1.5 seconds uh, because you have to sample three random numbers. But recall that I only sample the sign if I do not reject. Yeah, So there's already the efficiency that I sample the third one only yeah, with a uh, um, uh, a certain uh, probability. Um, so, of course, you see that the Mersenne Twister with the inversion of the distribution function, the IDC, ICDF method, is much faster. Yeah? It just needs to sample a single uniform and calculates then the inversion yeah, using this rational function approximation, and this is much faster. Also, the Horton sequence yeah, takes quite 
long, yeah, because the Holton sequence gets slower and slower because you have to calculate from the index the number, yeah, and this sum becomes larger and larger. Uh, and you have the same similar effect, yeah, that we are in 2D yeah, a little bit faster, and yeah, ICDF from the Holton is also much faster. Okay. So this is uh, what we did, and uh, I have also a nice uh, GeoGebra um, experiment. So you can look here at the link below, and um, this visualizes a little bit what's going on in acceptance rejection. And uh, maybe let's conclude this little experiment by looking at this. So this is here. So what you see here is the first step that I will sample the uniform random variable V. Yeah, The uniform random variable V is between zero and one. Yeah? So if you go to the left here, this is my uniform random variable V. If the uniform random variable V is between 0.5 and one, then actually I'm here in the case, yeah, two V minus one, yeah. So the sign will be positive. Yeah? So I will have a positive value. Okay. And I have an exponential distributed Y, but since I'm now already on the positive side, I have to add one half. Yeah. The integral from minus infinity to zero was over the density g was one half. So it, it is one half plus one half of an exponential distributed random variable. So this blue line here, starting from 0 0.5, is one half plus one half the distribution function of an exponential distributed random variable. If I go below 0 0.5, you see 2v, yeah? if I'm below 0 0.5, 2v is below 1, minus 1, it will be negative. The sign will be negative. And here with this absolute value, I will sample now 1 half minus the exponential distributed random variable. Yeah? So I will sample the negative side. So you see this here is really the function uh, which I have plotted here, y is minus the sign 2v minus 1, logarithm 1 minus absolute value of 2v minus 1. Yeah? So the sign, and then it's minus logarithm, the exponential distribution. So now we sample the u. Yeah? So we sample the uniform u, so this guy here. So let's sample the uniform u. This means I sample in a two-dimensional space. So I have now a u, and a V, yeah, which I sample here, okay? So I have a U and a V. The U is independent of the V, yeah? The V decides which value Y is the candidate, and the U is just independent. The U will decide whether I keep the point or not. So you see, if the U moves here a little bit higher, then suddenly the point vanishes. Here it's very high. Oh, maybe I go here. Oh, here, suddenly the point vanishes. So what is what is deciding if the point vanishes, vanishes? It's this condition here. Is u less or equal minus one half set minus one squared? Yeah, you can now plug in the set. If you plug in the set here, this is, is u less or equal exponential minus one half minus logarithm one minus absolute value two v minus one minus one squared, yeah? A complicated function, but you can just plot this function in two dimensions, yeah? So this here is u is equal to exponential minus one half and then minus logarithm one minus two uh, v minus one, yeah? So, and you accept the point if the u is below, so this is the queen area, and you reject the point if the point is above. So this is what acceptance rejection sampling doing is doing. So this function here, yeah, so below where we have the queen area is actually the function f of y divided by c times g of y. So this function is yeah, the ratio of the densities, yeah, the density g multiplied with the constant c. Yeah, this is telling me when we do accept the point and reject the point.
Okay, I will need this picture yeah, um, again in our next section, yeah, but maybe you can play a little bit around with this and you see how acceptance rejection works. So summary, the acceptance rejection sampling of a normal distributed sequence yeah, can be constructed here in two different versions. Yeah, We have a two-dimensional version two-dimensional uniform sequence. So I use U, J, V, J. And in this method, I sample the sign and I sample the exponential distributed Y from the V yeah, simultaneously. Um, and U is then the acceptance condition. Or alternatively, there's a three-dimensional version, I can sample from a three-dimensional uniform. So I have U, V, and W. So the sign is sampled from the W and the Y is sampled from the V. Yeah? And in both cases, the U is sampled for the acceptance uh, condition. Okay, so that was maybe more or less it on random number generation. And I would like to return to Monte Carlo, but we will use the acceptance rejection sampling in this motivation.